fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When boys line up to run a race, galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked. Shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? The first half of the 19th century saw the beginning of expansion into the West. Nature, Indians, and wild beasts had been conquered. But there remained the bandit gangs and outlaws. Men who lived by the gun and preyed on fellow men. Men like Ace Lassiter, who led one of the strongest gangs. It was virtually an outlaw army that swept down on a long train of freighting mules. Don't meet the survivors! Get the mules as well as the mule skinners! freight train out of St. Joe was heavily loaded with mining machinery and equipment. The cargo would have meant much in the development of a community, but Lassiter's gang planned otherwise. A weakened vessel sent the engine plunging into the bottom of the canyon, and all the heavy cars went after. Lassiter's gang was waiting at the bottom of the canyon. Move in, boys! You know what to do if you find any survivors! Burn all the cars and roll that machinery in the deep water. A river steamship headed toward St. Joe. It was heavily loaded with lumber and building materials to be sent overland from the Missouri City. But it never reached its destination. Lassiter's gang struck when the riverboat touched Harper's Landing. Survivors, boys! Kill off everyone on board, then fire the boat and cargo! Oh, oh, Who's that? One of our boys did hit me. Oh, my leg! My leg! He's passing the leg, boys. Looks like he can't stand up. Well, if he can't stand, he can't travel. There's no room in my den for triple. No! Oh! Lassiter, you... You... Al Curtis has just dropped out of our gang. But, boss, you didn't give Al a chance. I'd put a murky bullet into the head of a horse with a broken leg. Why shouldn't I do the same for Al? After the attack, the charred remains of the steamboat and its cargo drifted downstream together with an assortment of wreckage. The Lone Ranger and Toto were on the riverbank watching the grim procession. Another attack, Toto. Ah, 
Must be plenty big gang. Hello, during the past few months, there have been a number of raids on railroads, wagon trains, and freighters. That's right. Every case, the attackers were more interested in destruction than in thievery. They take guns and ammunition. A few things crooks can use. But they concentrate on the destruction of materials for expansion of building, business, and industry. I think... Hello, look. Ah, man floats downstream. Face down in the water. In dead. Current is bringing the body close to shore. I, I think I can reach it. I'll wait out a couple of yards here. Give me your hand. I have it. That boat makes him pretty heavy. There. Him, him shot from sight ahead. Another bullet broke his leg. Let's see if it's anyone we... Toto. I know who this man is. His name was Al Kurtz. Me hear that name. Him bad man. His pictures on handbills all over the country. Maybe him in gang that raids steamboat. That's true. I can name the leader of that gang. Lassiter? That's right. Ace Lassiter. Kurtz never made a move that wasn't ordered by his boss. Get a blanket, Toto. Ah. And... What we do? They'll wrap this body and leave it here. While you go into town, report to the sheriff. Why you go? Otto, I want to know more about Ace Lassiter. And there's just one way to get the information. Oh. Before I act, I want to see our friend, the Padre. I'm going to start at once for his mission. Me join you there? Yes. When Toto went into the sheriff's office, he saw a handbill on the wall. He pointed to this and said, That fella... Him one we find in River. Al Kurtz, eh? Huh? That's right. Well, this calls for special handling. We've had orders from Washington, D.C. as to what we should do with any leads on the gang that hit the riverboat. Wait here, Injun. I've got to get to the telegraph office. Here, Chief. A telegram from a small town on the Missouri River. The sheriff's message was delivered to the head of a special bureau appointed by the president to aid in the expansion of the West. Well, Kurt, huh? So he's dead. Yes, sir. I've been waiting for something like this. Find the inspector, Martin, and ask him to come to my office immediately. Yes, sir. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger had reached a little mission and joined his friend, the Padre. My son, never before have I seen you wear an expression of such great concern. Never before, Padre, have I faced a situation like this. You have heard of Ace Lassiter. And who has not? You have heard of the many recent attacks on wagon trains, railroads, steamships. Great tragedy. Yes, Lassiter is behind them. Indeed. He has a powerful organization, Padre. He and the men with him are fighting change. They're opposed to progress. But why, Amigo? Their own greedy, selfish interests are best served. The West remains unchanged. They know that if this country develops and becomes more civilized, there will be more law and order. Now, they don't want that. They want things to remain just as they are, with small towns isolated and easy prey for outlaw armies. They don't want each town to expand and to be connected by good roads. Railroads and telegraph lines to every other town. That's why they're opposed to progress. That's why they're destroying everything that might develop this country. My son, you may be right. I think you are. But what can be done? I'm going to join Ace Lassiter's gang what? and try to work against him from the inside. There is great danger. That's why I came to you. This mission may be my last. If I'm unmasked and my body is found as an outlaw member of Lassiter's gang... You will know what to do. Your grave shall be alongside that of your brother and the brave Texas Rangers who died with him. Thanks, Padre. And now, let us pray that your courage may remain steadfast, no matter what may come. It was one hour later when the masked man, followed by the Padre, came from the mission and stood beside his great horse, Silver. Refreshed both physically and spiritually, his eyes held a light of courage as he tightened the thing. Oh, uh, one last request, Padre. Yes, my son. Toto will come here. Keep him with you until you hear from me or about me. This is a job I must handle alone. I understand. I shall pray for your safe return. But if this is not to be... It will be up to Toto to take care of Dan Reed. 
Steady, Silver. Easy, big fella. Hasta la vista, Padre. Come on, Silver! Just so the girded knights rode forth to battle. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one of the hats that these people have to pay. Eating our weedies, and do, 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 and okay. Okay. Sure enough, take Midwestern champions, for instance. When Bobby Feller takes the mound, the outfield boys sit on the ground. That Wheaties pitching leaves them there, watching batters fan the air. And when we name our Wheaties crew, Big Ted Klazuski's in there, too. He'll face those hurlers day or night and knock their fastballs out of sight. Bob Feller and Ted Klazuski both know that Wheaties magic. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doing now to continue. When the undercover man named Martin came west, he brought carefully prepared handbills and circulars that would establish him as a notorious outlaw. Aided by good luck, he found Ace Lassiter's gang within a short time and became accepted as a probationary member. The Lone Ranger was less than a mile away at the bottom of the canyon that bordered Lassiter's camp. A disguise had been applied to his face. He was about to change into other clothing when a sharp voice spoke from behind a nearby rock. Get him up. We got you covered, mister. Who are you? You can call him Bat. I'm Rhino. There's a couple other boys covering you from the ledge up above. You're members of Ace Lassiter's outfit. You're just the men I want to see. Yeah? Yeah. I heard Lassiter was taking in new members. That's the case. I... Wait a minute, mister. Just what are you doing here? Looks like he was fixing to change clothes, eh, Rhino? Hey, what's this, a mask? Well, of course. Don't you boys occasionally wear a mask? Now, if you'll give it to me, I'll put it in my saddlebag. Hold it, mister. It. Don't make any more moves. Just keep your hands at shoulder level. Pick up his gun belt, Bat. Right. He's a downright handsome gun. What's the matter? Rhino, these cartridges are silver. Silver? You were fixing to join our gang, eh? What about it? I've heard of a gent who uses silver bullets, and he wears a mask like that when you had laying on the ground, and he rides a white horse. I get it, Bat. You're speaking of the Lone Ranger. Yeah. Keep him covered, Rhino. I'll get his horse. Here, you. Come here. Go on, Silver. Go, boy. Come back here. Come back, you critter. Go on, Silver. Go on. Shut up. The Lone Ranger slumped to the ground when Bat struck him cruelly with the barrel of his six-gun. When he recovered consciousness, Silver was nowhere to be seen. But Bat and Rhino and several other men waited in grim silence. As soon as you can stand, we'll take you to the boss and see what Lassiter has to say. The Lone Ranger felt reasonably sure that he had completed the disguise on his face before the capture by Lassiter's men. But now it didn't seem to matter. He knew when he faced Ace Lassiter that his life was measured in minutes. So this is the Lone Ranger, eh? No doubt about it, boss. He laid aside his mask and he was about to change into other clothes. There they are. We brought him along. And here's his gun belt with the silver bullets. What about his horse? Yeah, we tried to get the critter, but he got away. So you're the Lone Ranger, huh? I've heard a lot about you. Haven't you, Martin? Yes, I have. A man no one ever saw without his mask. Take a good look, Lassiter. I am. I suppose you know what's coming to you. I'll have the satisfaction of knowing that I died for a worthwhile cause. Martin, I've changed my mind about your test. Instead of waiting, you can take the test right now. Kill the Lone Ranger. No? Why not? Give me his gun belt. This? You heard me. Let's have it. Be sort of fitting to let the Lone Ranger be killed with one of his own silver bullets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that touch. All right, keep your hands up, mister. Walk ahead of me over to the edge of the cliff. I'll let you have it so your body will fall into the water down below. Save us the trouble of digging a grave. Is that all right with you, Lassiter? That's all right. Get going. 
We'll be watching you from here. All right, start walking. It was about 100 yards to the edge of the 20-foot drop. During the walk, the Lone Ranger moved two paces ahead of Martin and held his hands at shoulder level while he thought of many things. He wondered about his great horse, Silver, that he had last seen at the place of his capture less than a mile away. And he wondered about the man who had been delegated to shoot him. Martin, Martin, what are you saying? Now I have it. I remember you, Martin. You're no outlaw. Who says I'm not? A few years ago, you were a federal agent. I hope you're still one. Are you working undercover here to get this gang? How do you know me? We used to be good friends. I doubt that. I don't forget a face. You haven't seen my face. What? I disguised it before I was captured. Now, you want me to take another step over the edge of the canyon? Or wait here until you shoot? It's only a 20-foot drop. The water's deep. It'll break your fall. But if I let you escape, Lassiter will kill me. Can you smash Lassiter's gang? I hope to. He's planning to attack the Cheyenne Warehouse on Saturday. Oh. I'm going to try to slip away from him Friday night and get the soldiers from Fort Laramie. You've got to succeed, Martin. I'd like to know who you are. Something familiar about your eyes, the shape of your chin. The sky doesn't hide that. I was with you when you were wounded by the Cavendish gang in Texas. Wait. Wait a minute. No, no, it can't be. A Texas ranger by the name of Reed, the younger brother of the captain. Martin, you're the only man excepting Toto who knows my identity. Just one thing, Martin, before you shoot. I have a nephew, my brother's son. His name is Dan. Yes. Help Toto prepare that boy for the future. His generation must carry on after our work is done. The next century... Ranger and Martin talked fast in low voices. Meanwhile, Lassiter and his gang, watching the two men a hundred yards away, were becoming impatient. Hey, Martin, we've waited long enough. Let that critter have it or we'll do the shooting for you. Pat, you and Ryan will get your rifles ready. Right, boy. Right. Martin doesn't shoot in five seconds. You two open fire. And shoot Martin as well as the Lone Ranger. Martin's going to shoot. That's it. Blasted the Lone Ranger right over the ledge. For a minute, I thought he was bagging out. He's looking down into the ravine. Make sure of him, Martin. Firing three more shots after the man who had disappeared over the edge of the ravine, Martin tossed the guns and gun belt into the canyon, then turned on his heel and rejoined Lassiter. Plans went ahead for the attack on the warehouse at Cheyenne. Ace Lassiter sent out his scouts who brought back reports that pleased the leader. On Friday night, firearms were inspected and final orders given. You, Martin. Well, stay with me. Rhino Bat. Yeah, boy. Stay close. Keep an eye on Martin. What's the idea? I'm taking no chances, that's all, Martin. You might get the idea that you could get a nice reward and a pardon for your past crimes. By sneaking off to tell about our plan. You think I'd double-cross you like that? I'll be more sure of you when I see how you act on your first big job with it. Till then, we're watching you. Martin didn't sleep that night. He lay awake waiting, watching and hoping for a chance to get away as he had planned and tell the soldiers at Fort Laramie about East Lassiter's army of destruction. But his hopes were futile. Bat and Rhino took turns sleeping. One was always awake and watching with a gun held ready. Early morning found the outlaws on the move. Martin was forced to ride at Ace's side with Bat and Rhino right behind. There's a warehouse straight ahead. The watchman sees us. Let him have it, Martin. You mean shoot him? I mean shoot him. You missed. He's open fire on us. I'll get him. That got him. Martin, I don't like the way you've been acting. You could have hit that watchman. Oh, stay here, Lester. You better play straight on this job. Here comes some of the sounds. Close in on the double. Get up. Get up. Come on. Come on. The outlaws spurred their horses and dashed to the warehouse. They reined in fast and were oh, 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 oh. What? Each man rushed to his assignment. All right. Some opened fire on the approaching townsmen. Others smashed locks on the warehouse doors and prepared to go inside to start the fires. Bat and Rhino stayed close to Martin and Ace Lassiter. Use that gun, Martin. I've been watching you. Four soldiers. And that man in the lead. That white horse. Martin. It's the Lone Ranger. You bet it is. And he's bringing troops to get you. You didn't kill him. Why, you double cross? The army's spreading out of the surrounding. We gotta clear out. I got one thing to do. Oh, that's for you, Martin. 
That's for a double cross, boss. We gotta ride hard. We're being circled. Every man for himself. Right, sure. Sure. The outlaws had no chance to escape. Before they could mount and ride, the soldiers had swept around in a tight circle to surround eight Lassiter's band. Many of the outlaws fell. The rest threw down their guns and held their hands high in surrender. The Lone Ranger quickly spotted Martin and rushed to the side of the dying secret agent. Oh, sure, oh, he's a kidding me. Martin, I... Glad you made it. Let's see that wound. No, no, no use. I'm coming. My job was done when I passed the word of the attack to you and let you get away. I owe my life to you, Martin. But that doesn't mean much. It's what you did for the nation that counts. I just shot to your right, hoping you'd fall into the deep water where you'd have a chance to live. I didn't think you could reach the soldiers in time. I found Silver. I went downstream to the place where I'd been captured. Silver was waiting there. But you, Martin, your wound uh, let me... Uh, you can't help me. I'm done for. You carry on. And train someone to carry on in your place. In the 20th century. Dan Reed will meet the 20th century as a man. His generation will be heard from. Great things lie ahead for this nation in the future. Great tests of strength and courage. America will meet those tests, Martin. As long as there are men like you. No, no. Men like you, Reed. Crusaders. Men with courage to fight all odds. Men who won't let selfish interests and greed stand in the way of... of conquest. Your kind will help me, Martin. We'll see this country to the threshold of the 20th century. Then a new kind of fighting man will carry the load. We'll see the West made safe for industry. Boys of today will be the men of the next century. There are leaders among them. Pioneers who will build great cities, mills, and factories in the West. Men who will make America the nation that will set the pace for a new world. I see them, Reed. I see them marching to the future. Marching over broad highways where the first trails were blazed by. The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.